Thank you, bro, for chiming in. Thank you, bro. Yeah. How are you? Generally. Oh. I mean, I'm fine. My family's fine. Um, lost some stuff, uh, you know, just um, it's uh, pretty heavy. It's way gnarlier than the news is reporting. Um, even the death toll is, I don't know, bigger than anyone could imagine. I, I would even I would even go as far as to say it might be in like the thousand range. Um, people got trapped in their cars. There was nowhere to go. There's really no escape once it happens. And it was basically a flamethrower through the town mm. uh, because the winds were so strong. Like one moment you're standing there and the next it's a thousand degrees outside and there's flames whipping everywhere. Um, so, I mean, I've just heard some of the stories so far of people escaping and it just sounds absolutely insane. And um, yeah, it's pretty heavy, but so far it's been really impressive because the Maui community has made the biggest difference. I'd say the government's definitely fumbled the bag as they usually do, um, yeah. they're slow to respond. Um, they're blocking all the roads, so we've had to go by boat and jet ski in order to like get supplies to people who are cut off. And it's just really bizarre. I don't know. They're trying to like maybe cover up the fact that it's ten times worse than um, than than people know. So people are trying to get help into the community, but the one thing that the government and the authorities are doing is blocking the road to prevent that help getting there. Yes. Because um, I've heard there hasn't been a lot of help from the military, from the government. There's no, they haven't activated the troops on the ground there to try and go into some sort of emergency response. It, um, if they said they have, um, I haven't seen it. I mean, mm. it, there's the Coast Guard is blocking people from going into Lahaina Town from the ocean. So we have to drive way past it to another part of the west side to drop supplies. And um, it's so bad, people are just looting now. Uh, and just taking whatever they can. And that's like putting a lot of people whose homes did survive and they're staying at their homes in jeopardy because people are getting robbed. And um, it's just, I mean, it's heavy. Uh, like the stories I heard is just um, absolutely like mind bending. The fact that it could, you know, all be unfolding this way. It just seems like no one knows what to do or the government especially. Um, and uh, they're like, FEMA's been withholding supplies heavily. Um, and so, like, there's stuff in the West Side, and they're like, oh, we can't give it out because we're not organized enough yet. It's like, dude, just get it to people because people are starving right now. And um, you can get out, but a lot of people don't have enough gas to leave the West Side right now. That's one of the things you realize living in Hawaii, so divorced from easy access of things and they always talk about the food supply and how quickly we would just end up hungry and end up without food here if, if something like what has happened to you guys have and that's what you're experiencing is what shortness of food water those those essential supplies yeah yeah i mean it's crazy i think uh i sure hope they decide to bury the um electrical lines and um not have it necessarily be on uh you know the the poles because we get windy conditions on maui obviously all the time but in lahaina in particular it used to funny enough back when there was agriculture this never happened because all the fields were well managed and they were green and the um amb who operated these fields also had their own fire trucks and water tankers and stuff and so um there's always fire breaks and that's why it hasn't happened I mean, people are acting like, oh, it's it's climate change. Winds are stronger than they've ever been. It's like, well, no, that's normal. Like that happens a few times a year where the direction's just right and it goes down the valley. And it's just the differences is just um, land management, the government not like basically preparing for something like this. And then they didn't shut off the now electric didn't shut off the electrical grid when things started bolted like exploding and. In most places, they would turn all that off if it's really windy. And the fact that it's all like hanging on telephone poles and stuff, like mm -hmm. it should probably be buried all underground. But in the rebuild, I hope they decide to do it underground. But my feeling is they're going to just cut corners and put poles up again, and it's going to, could happen again. I mean, that's PK and I are having a quick conversation off air about that. When you look at the way they've tried to manage the gro uh, growth of Haleiwa and maintain integrity, that 
Lahaina was such a unique town, wasn't it? It was a, it was a throwback of a different time. It had such culture and, and such an energy to it. It's going to be interesting to see the concepts and ideas for a, re, a rebuild of that town and, and whether they're able to maintain that character and that personality that was just so, so amazing. Kai, what kind of yeah. things have you guys been doing with the boats and the mm -hmm. wave runners? What kind of supplies and where are you getting them to? Um, so basically we've been dropping them off on beaches, all the supplies via boat and jet ski, usually the boats to carry everything, the jet skis to shuttle in and out. The whole community is turned up um, and uh, everyone's doing what they can um, due to the circumstances because they're just about to let the roads open again. But the problem is, is they will only allow returning residents who have it on their ID, but a lot of those people are actually over there. So it's like no one can actually get stuff. So a boat and jet ski might still be the most efficient way. And it really depends. Like right now, it's a lot of propane, um, gasoline, stuff that they can, you know, run generators off of. Um, there's a lot of food that's being shelled out there. Um, need a lot of non-perishables, of course, water and all that. Um, that's been, a lot has been coming. And I mean, to show how big the community's really shown up, um, you know, it's, it's insane because even people from Molokai who have nothing are boating stuff over from their one general store yes. and uh and getting it to people over there and that's pretty wild um and so yeah like pretty much uh, a lot of baby products and stuff i mean we had a, a friend of mine um or a friend of ours uh they're about to have a baby like any day the due date was on the fire and so they're at our house and you know this tonight there might be a baby born in um our you know ohana or apartment um so it's like those baby supplies are like huge. You don't realize mm -hmm. that until there is none. But luckily we have a lot. <laughs> you live near the airport. What's it been like over there? Well, so a lot of people have been sheltering there, but a lot of people have been like leaving as well. Um, fortunately, I think all these hotels need to open up their doors to these people um, because this place well, is no electricity on the west side, but it would be great if, if people like postpone their vacations and allowed space mm -hmm. available because there's just, there was already a housing crisis and now there's a real housing crisis. I mean, there's well over 2000 homes that are gone. Wow. So Kai, what do you get? What'd you do today already this morning? This morning, uh, we loaded up a bunch of boats. There was about 15 jet skis. We launched them all at the Harbor and got them off. So there was a huge amount of supplies going there right now. And what can we do? What can people from outside, you know, there's going to be people looking at this from all over the place. What can people do? Are there, community approved donation sites are there things that you know because I, I know in these situations I, I definitely people want to donate um the maui food bank is a really good one they could always use more food or more money to get more food mm -hmm. um so that's like a solid one i would avoid doing any um uh i would avoid kind of donating anything to like out of out of island outside island or even outside state kind of fundraisers because I think the bigger, from what I understand, the bigger um, kind of like organizations, um, the Maui County wants them to hold withhold 50% for the rebuild and people need stuff now. So a lot mm -hmm. of the GoFundMes um, are really, that are based in Lahaina, I think are really good because everyone that started a GoFundMe from Lahaina, it, like for example, Slater Trout on um, GoFundMe, that's a really reputable one because I know him personally, and uh, he's going to be giving it to all the families, and he knows everyone. And that's Slater like really Trout. Cool. Slater Trout. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I would just, it's, it's really difficult. There's a lot of scams. I think a lot of the money won't end up going to anybody. Right now, it's about getting people food and water and stuff. But when it comes time to rebuild, that's when the big donations are going to be really good. And everyone wants to help now, and I love that. There's really mm -hmm. nowhere for it to go except for, food and supplies and stuff but if someone wants to make a giant contribution that's gonna make the real difference in rebuilding these homes because a lot of local people even if they had insurance it's like it caused the cost of building here is absolutely astronomical mm -hmm. um, and there's no supply so even having the money to ship in wood of all things um, is going to be critical and i i think we're looking at a giant economic problem on the island because that was the heart and soul the engine of this island I mean, one story real quick, it was like one of my good friends, 
um, his girlfriend was um, at Front Street when it happened. This is one of a thousand stories, but it was really heavy because um, she was trying to flee and she got onto the um, bypass and telephone lines fell. And so the cops redirected all the traffic back into Lahaina. And the, that's when the fire really exploded. And she got freaked out and pulled over and turned to the right instead of going left like she was told to. And every car in front and behind her that went, they all died. And so it's like, it's just heavy because you know somebody or someone's parents. I mean, the and I don't want to be too graphic, but it's like there's entire families that are laying on the street, you know, like dead, you know, kids, everything. It's like, they're saying it's 35 people dead. Dude, it's like, I thought it was like a lot would be a hundred. I'm not even ruling it out that there's a thousand or more people dead. And it's just like, it's just a bummer. And you want to like, I want to do so much more, but there's like, there's only so much you can do. And the government's making it hard for any one of us to want to help. Um, and I get it because it's an active crime scene and they got to, figure it out but at the same time it's like everyone's like not trying to like take advantage everyone's just trying to help and they're not helping so we have to help in a perfect world it would be all taken care of and we could just be like okay everyone's doing the right thing but you know only the locals right now i feel like are doing the most i mean and we've heard this story before in other states in other disasters Rico, new yeah. orleans you hear about the exact same story where there's all this infrastructure that the taxpayers have paid for, mm. but somehow it's not actioned in the best interests and there's bureaucracy and, and, and rules and regulations that don't allow them to just do what they've got to do and look after people. It's a sad well, situation. Thing, like everything, appreciate... Yes, mate. I, I, I feel like everything, you know, the best, the, it's like the smallest communities usually can take care of their own. Uh, yeah. But when communities get so big and, you know, like now it, ha it has to go through the state and then it has to go through the federal government. And then, you know, if if our mayor and stuff would be a little more transparent and kind of more on it, it would be a lot easier to to know what to do in a way, because mm -hmm. no one else has eyes. We're all seeing it from one perspective. And that perspective is like mind blowing. And we know it's way worse. And. You know, it's like, how do we get to people? And they're not allowing anyone to know how to get to people. And it's really bizarre. I mean, it's just like, it really, it's really disappointing. And I think a lot of people are very upset. I mean, generally, I'm like pretty accepting with like, okay, everyone's trying their best, you know, but I feel like in this case, like, people don't know what to do. And it's the people we've like, elected aren't doing good enough job. Literally, if all of us on jet skis are doing more than them, then what's what the hell's going on? And this is this is in our job. This is in what we do. And and you know we're it's good though. It's good to see this community can rally. But I think the people need more power again. Again, there's that dis disillusionment with with the authorities and their ability to look after people. And and you know our hearts go out to everyone over there, mate. We appreciate you taking the time and sharing the stories. What we have seen is heartbreaking. Is is devastation. Is like a war zone. And then to hear that indeed people can't even see how bad things are because it's not being shown and that things are m even far worse than what we see is, is a devastating thought and we can only imagine how hard it is for people to, to action and just go to look after people. It becomes quite simple at that point, doesn't it? You're looking after people, not the rules, not the regulations, not this, not that, but just getting food and water and supplies to people so they can live and exist. Radically. Yeah, right now, the people that are not even affected by the fire were even trying to help too. Like, obviously, the people that are affected because they're with people that weren't affected now. Everyone's, like, in a, someone's friend's house, you know? Right. And um, those are, like... And I mean, there's a lot more people suffering that, you know, were just the on the wrong side of where the fire was. Um, and there's like a lot of elderly and people. And I mean, I mean, the death toll probably will continue to rise and it'll be days after the fire even happened. Mate, it's just, I don't know what to say. It's, it's radical that, you know, we live in that we know that life is, is vulnerable. It's fragile. Um, and these things always remind you of how lucky you are. You know, I've been sitting here with a you know herniated disc, thinking I've got problems. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Seriously, it just puts everything into perspective, mate. So oh, we appreciate- no, for sure. It's just like everything becomes secondary. I mean, the way there's the best south swell of the year is right now uh, on the south shore. And you're looking at it, and I have no interest in surfing, yeah. um, which is impossible to think. But it's just like, because you want to help your fellow person. But it's just like, it's just crazy that, you know, these things sort of just happen like this. And yeah. you're like, you see the bigger perspective, you know? I want, I, I want to help rebuild this town. Um, and, and just because now my daughters will never get to experience the oldest, you know, town in our island and even in Hawaii and, uh, you know, the former capital. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it was so unique. And I'm sure, you know, the power of people, mate, that's what is strong. That was the, what is real is the power of people, the power of truth and the, the power in the hearts of all of you guys over there and the work you're doing. We know many of you know, your mates, our mates and... Um, you know, we'll send all our love. And, and again, if people wanted to help, Kai was suggesting the Maui Food Bank is a good option at this point in time. And then from a GoFundMe point of view, Kai was suggesting that uh, Slater Trout is one that he knows money will go to the right places. And, and perhaps, you know, for us, we're going to hold off that little bit until things, you know, clear and we know that the right places to put our support. And we're right behind you, mate. We're going to do everything we can to help you as well and the town. And, uh, yeah, send our love, mate. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Kai. Thanks, Kai. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. I'm back out there. (laughs) Ah, you legend, mate. But if things do come up that we can share and you go, hey, this is where they need help. This is where they, you know what I mean? We can direct people in a good way. Let us know. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's just, it's like such a weird time because like it's getting a lot of money is great, but just making sure it goes to where it's supposed to go. It's just a lot of weird things are going behind the scenes. Like, the big organization, everyone's telling Fancy them to that. like, uh, everyone's yeah. telling them they have to hold, withhold 50% of what they get for the rebuild. And it's like, no, like, you, people get to need the to rebuild when you get to the rebuild. Yeah. And, and like, hey, that $100 billion you sent to Ukraine, send Maui at least $2 billion, you know, have like, you. yeah, is, like, the no, it's, it's... should be going to the people that need it in our country. Our, I mean, Give the re- give a reason to the Hawaii people of Hawaii to hate the U.S. <laughs> you yeah. know, this yeah. could be the time where you could really flip a coin and be like, "Wow, they're actually looking out to the local people, not just the tourists." Yeah, and and having having given up our land to them has has been a worthwhile thing because we've we've looked after and cared for it at a at a moment like this. Let's yep. see that happen, mate. But uh, in the meantime, you guys are the ones. That- Doing the work, brother. We love you, mate. Thanks. Let's give everyone our love over there. Thank you, mate. Later, bro.